Listen to this, folks. If you take all the books, throw all the books out the window, throw all those theory concepts out the window, if you learn this one pattern, the freedom key system pattern, and you learn how to listen and hear to the seven feelings and play the feeling that you hear, you can literally play anywhere on the guitar neck, all by feel without thinking about the notes, and you can play the music that you that you feel inside you. You can improvise, you can play solos, you can you can add your own creative touches to other people's songs that you love playing, that you love. Anyway, the point is, there's an easier way. I have a few questions, and I, I'm sure there's a few people in the super group uh, in Breakthrough Guitar that have some questions uh, about you and about, um, I mean, you are, you, you've built this program that has helped tons and tons and tons of people break through on guitar. So uh, I'm just going to jump in and uh, ask some questions. So first off, uh, have you always been a guitar player? Did you, you, did you come out of the womb as a guitar player? Or how, how did that work for you? Well, you know, something I like to, to say is that uh, a lot of people say that guitar players are born. And, um, you know, I wasn't born a guitar player. I was born a baby. So, no, I haven't always played guitar. You know, I started playing guitar maybe when I was, I think, nine years old, nine or ten years old. I think nine. So it's been uh, it's been a while, been a, over over a couple of decades for sure. Wow. Since nine. OK, so was it like did somebody give you a guitar or did you watch a movie or like what was that motivation? So my my dad played guitar. I had two older stepbrothers who played guitar. And um, to be perfectly honest, uh, we're, I'm just going to dive straight into it here. Uh, I kind of you know, I would walk around and pick up their guitars every now and then. But like my two older stepbrothers and my dad, my dad was a decent guitar player, um, you know, just played around as a hobby. But my two older stepbrothers uh, were in bands and they were always playing. Whether they were good or not, I don't really remember, to be honest. It was a long time ago at that point. But uh, I do remember just picking up their guitar every now and then and like just not really being able to do anything with it. Like I would see them practice and see them play. And um, yeah, for I don't know, maybe four or five years or so after that, uh, it was my only interaction with a guitar was just picking it up, picking my brother's guitar up off the stand and trying to make some kind of music. It was really noise. It, I was really terrible at it at that, at that time. But uh, that's kind of how I got started. So you've been playing, um, you've been playing since nine ish. And uh, like, like we have tons of people who've been playing for 20, 30, 40, 50 years playing guitar. And there's all sorts of struggles that, and plateaus and hurdles that we have to get over. Um, what were some of the ones that like specifically for you that were the ones that are most notable in your life that you were able to overcome? Well, I want to make something clear first that when you talk to, you know, your everyday person who doesn't play guitar, doesn't really know anything about guitar. And you say you've been playing for 20, 30 years. They think that's really impressive, but that doesn't mean anything just because you've had, you know, you know how to pick up a guitar and play a couple of chords or something for a few decades doesn't mean you're any good at it or doesn't mean you ha you've, you've really gotten, uh, gotten anywhere with it. So I say that because I want to go into the struggles just to, to kind of piggyback off of what I said a minute ago when I first started playing that, you know, for the first four or five years, I mean, I can hardly play a, f a few chords and maybe a few tiny bits and pieces of songs that I rec like I'm talking like uh, four or five notes, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, when it comes to struggles, I mean, shoot, wh which ones do you want to talk about? I mean, there, there's an endless list. I'm just going to kind of give the big picture of struggles and then how it led into actually having so-called what I call a breakthrough or, you know, the, the biggest aha moment I've ever had. Um, so in general, I'm just going to lay out the, the general um, lay of the land here. And I think a lot of people share the same story, at least just from teaching for years and years. I know that I see the same struggles over and over again, and I went through the exact same thing. And that's the only way I can recognize it. So what happens? So we all, we start out playing, we learn a few bits and pieces of songs or a few chords, right? And in the beginning, um, it's, it's a little bit difficult because your fingers, like, let's be honest, no baby was born coming out of the womb with their, with their fingers being able to move around on a guitar neck. It, it's not natural. So you have to learn how to do that. Um, it's really awkward at first. It's really awkward for a long time, actually. And at the beginning, your fingers hurt because of you know pressing down the strings. So you have to get over that phase. So that in the beginning, those are the kind of struggles that you have. But what happens is anybody who's passionate about guitar, anybody who loves it um, and they play their first few chords, like they, they get past that very beginner stage and they know they want to go further than that. What happens is 
that we, we start to learn more stuff. We think we need to learn more stuff. So what I mean by that is we can play, you know, maybe half of a song or a, a couple of chord progressions or something, if we even know what a chord progression that term is at that point. And when we want to get better at, let's say, being able to play an entire song or being able to play a more, more difficult pieces of music uh, from songs that we like, or even beyond that, uh, wanting to move towards improvising or playing lead guitar or in having an actual knowledge of what the heck are you doing on the fretboard? How do you make sense of this thing? So you not only can you repeat the sounds that sound good, but also so you can watch other players and so you can listen to other players uh, and listen to your favorite bands and actually learn what they're doing because you know what they're doing, right? So when, when, when a guitar player wants to get to that phase, and I'm telling my story here, right? So when, when you get to the phase where you're ready to start learning more and you're ready to start understanding what you're doing on the guitar deck and you want to start um, maybe learning a little bit something about theory or at least you think you should um, and you want to be able to say pick up the guitar and play lead or pick up and, and jam with your friends you know just sit in your, your bedroom or something if you're a teenager or in college or whatever and then beyond that maybe you're at a family get together uh, you know when you get a little bit older or you're at a holiday event or, or, or whatever you want to be able to just pick up the guitar and play with people and what we normally try, uh, and this is, again, this is my story, so this is uh, what I did, was I, I went out there and I bought literally stacks of books. Um, I remember feeling so smart because I bought two books from the, the Ivy League School Princeton, and there were two, two, two books, 200 pages each of nothing but uh, sheet music and scales. Hmm. Nothing, literally 200 pages each. And I remember getting to maybe the second page of the very first book and just throwing it in the corner and letting it collect dust. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then of course, you know, shoot, don't even get me started on YouTube, but YouTube, I think every guitar player who knows about YouTube goes to YouTube and learns videos. But what happens is number one, uh, there's just so many people to learn from. It's just, it's just overwhelming to know where to start and who to listen to and what to, what to actually do. Right. So you, you, you comb through YouTube, you try to find certain videos that are actually going to make a difference based on what you think you need to know, where you are, uh, and where you think you need to go, which is ironic because as the, as the student or in that position, you don't know where you need to go. So you can't actually find the right videos that you need to watch. So what happens is you start uh, you know, stumbling around on different videos and going down different rabbit holes, and you might learn a little thing from some, somebody, if you can even keep up with what they're saying, uh, a lot of times you have to just rewind over and over again and just it gets frustrating. But then you bounce around from video to video like you're just wandering mm -hmm. and th there's no real guidance or structure. And eventually you learn that. Eventually you realize that. Uh, and I, I found that, you know, I, I would literally stay up till I can actually picture it in my mind right now. I remember watching one uh, one guy. This isn't important, by the way. It's just a just a detail. Uh, I remember watching one guy who was writing on one of those big uh, paper charts, you know, where you can flip the pages. Mm -hmm. And it was like from the 80s. And he was talking about how music was a language or something like that. And uh, I just remember being up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., just just trying, like, where are the right answers? You know, just how am I going to figure this thing out? Yeah, a lot of people can relate with that, that very that feeling of just going down that rabbit hole and not finding the answers that you want. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So he's just like wandering around in the desert. Like you're just slowly dying of thirst and you just need to find that water. But the more you go down the YouTube rabbit hole or like free articles that are out there, um, you, you, like I said, you can learn something. At least you can think you can learn something, but then you go, let's say to another article or another video and this, the advice is completely backwards or completely opposite. So you're getting misinformation and you're getting information that actually doesn't fit together. So you're getting different pieces of information and you're trying to put all this big puzzle together and you can't see how the pieces fit together. And it's like you at, at some point, um, you know, talking about my struggles, once I started trying to buy books and figure it all out, once I started learning all these videos and, you know, buying online courses uh, and, and going through courses, even the honestly, even some of the best courses from some of the top people, um, I won't mention any names, but I remember buying their courses and just trying to go through it and just being so confused because it was like, well, they would they would talk about something in the first video. And then the next one, it was like this, it was something completely different. And then I would look through all the videos and it's like 
there's no logic to it. There's no progression. There's no step by step, like do this first, do this second, do this third. And I would just get so confused. I get so overwhelmed. Um, and yeah. I mean, I'll just jump in real quick. And that's something I think that uh, Breakthrough Guitar and what you specifically have done really well is that you can go through one of the modules or one of the courses and it pieces everything together. Like you can like, there's no, there's no point. There's no point in the courses where you're like, why am I learning this? Um, and then if you ever feel that way, the very next module brings it all back together. You can go down that YouTube rabbit hole and start learning about modes and then start learning about scales and then the pentatonic scale. And then just, there's no rhyme or reason because it's, the YouTube algorithm doesn't think that way. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I think there's, there is a benefit to jump into a course that is structured, especially the way that we structure it. Right. And, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later about how did we even come up with structuring the way that things that we did. Um, but I want to make a point about something that you just said is that when you, when you're kind of free to roam and free to learn stuff on your own from anywhere, like I did through YouTube books, courses, anything, I try to learn from, through anything. Um, but I think, the biggest disadvantage and the, really the danger in that is that uh, you, well, number one, we, we only have one life according to what we know so far, right? We, we think we have one life and you only have so much time in this life. So by you jumping around at all these different things, you can really end up wasting a lot of that time and you're not going to get that time back. So the example that I wanted to use was if you don't know, you mentioned the word modes and you mentioned the word scales, et cetera. And the truth is, I, I think the vast majority of guitar players, which we all go out on YouTube and we see online that there's all these great guitar players, but it just seems like there's all these great guitar players because that's what you're seeing. You don't see the 99% of the rest of the world who, who can't just show up on a video and just play whatever they want, right? Most, the vast majority of people aren't like that. And when you, when you go out there and you start, what I was gonna say was most people aren't even ready to start learning modes they think they need to learn modes or they think they need to go learn all these different scales. I think they need to reach music because they think that's the path. They think that's how, how that's how I get to where I want to go by learning all this stuff and trying to think about it and trying to connect it all together, like learning all this theory, like circle of fifths and all this stuff and going down that path. And eventually one day it's just all magically going to connect. Well, it doesn't, it, it actually doesn't work that way. And a lot of people go their entire lives and never figure it all out. And, and I've, I talked to these people on the phone. It, that you can hear the pain in their voice. Like they, they just wish that somehow somebody would have showed them the way. And finally, I'm, I'm back to the example I was going to mention is that when it's, when you're left to your own devices to try to figure out what you should be doing, it's almost like you're, if you're in first grade, do you think that it's a good idea for a first grader to go pick and choose what they need to learn from, let's say a 12th grade class or a 10th grade class? It does. It wouldn't make any sense. It's not. It's not the right time for them to learn that stuff. They haven't walked through the steps of of being able to actually mentally see what it is that they need to learn and how it actually works and actually be able to understand it. So that's what happens when you're out there, like like I was for over 14 years or 15 years, 14 or 15 years. I was doing this exactly what we're talking about. I was just wandering around trying to figure out what the heck I need to learn or or practice enough. I just need to practice more. I just need to learn more. And eventually it's just all going to connect and work, but it doesn't work that way. And um, yeah, I think just in, in terms of summing up the struggles, I think that's uh, that's really the biggest trap that I see people fall into. And that's what I call, you know, the, the great guitar theory trap. We're all told that we need to learn all these different concepts and all these different all these different things in order to be able to play guitar, pick it up and play freely and actually express yourself and play the music that you have inside you play the music that you feel but it's it's not the case. I mean, I can go on and on and on about this. I don't yeah, want to. Yeah. So, so going through your journey, like you, I mean, you were on YouTube late at night, and you had felt those pains of just like, what's the what's the point of all these things? And there's they're not connecting. But there's a point where it it, it finally connected for you, right? Well, what did that look like? When when was it that you like you were able to, to turn the light bulb on for yourself that that made it all make sense? into a way that you're able to now teach us. Right, yeah, so there's there's a lot of stuff that happened in between there, but there's one moment that sparked it, and then there's one moment that uh, made me want to make it my mission to be able to share this with as many people as possible. So uh, we can get to the second one in a minute, but the first one was I had, after all of, all of those years of struggling how to figure it out on my own, looking at articles and 
buying all these books and buying these courses and trying to learn theory because I thought I needed to. Um, not to say that none of it is useful. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that doing all of that is not the, not the right path. Um, so what happened was I had, I had really given up four or five or six times. Um, and then there was one, there was one time where, uh, I knew, I had a friend who was at a local university and she was the band, the marching band director at the university. And she actually needed help uh, setting up some equipment in their room. So she knew that I had kind of like a mechanical background. You know, I could work with my hands and, you know, build stuff. So she needed some help. And I, I actually remember walking through the halls, going to her office and just seeing these people play music, like seeing people play clarinet and seeing people singing and seeing people play uh, piano and of course playing guitar. And I just remember wishing that like, why, why can't I be one of those? I just want to be one of those musicians. I just want to be able to play music. And anyway, so I ended up going to her office. We talked and whatnot. And, you know, I couldn't stop thinking about all the people that were there playing music while I was actually just there to set up some equipment. You know, I wanted to be the one playing music. Mm. So I asked her, uh, you know, if she knew anybody that taught guitar. And, and at this point, like I said, I had already gone through years of trying to figure it out. I had had multiple teachers that just taught me songs or really honestly just they just wanted a paycheck. They didn't care about me. You know, they they just got me in the room and said, OK, what do you want to learn? It's like, well, aren't you the teacher? Like, aren't you supposed to teach me yeah. what, what I need to learn? So anyway, this was after all of that. And so I was in her office and I couldn't stop thinking about that. And at the when she was like packing up her papers to leave on her desk, I just asked her if she knew anybody to talk guitar. Um, I wasn't even planning on it. It was just kind of out of out of the blue. And so ironically, she there was a or long story short, there was a teacher who was actually from South America. He was from Colombia, actually. And he was always she said he was always out of the country, pretty much always out of the country. Um, he did teach at the university, but mostly remotely. Uh, and he was hardly ever there. He was really hard to get in touch with. But long story short, she 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 knew I wasn't a student there. So she, you know, wasn't sure that she should actually give me his information. But she did. And long story short, I ended up going to this guy's house. Uh, he actually only taught five people and he happened to have one slot open. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going to this guy's house. It was really weird because my GPS was taking me through like a old rundown gas station and a really kind of seedy neighborhood. And I was like, what the heck did I get myself into? And so I show up and, you know, he's, he's like a, this amazing jazz guitar player, um, like mind blowingly good. And long story short, um, like I said, I, at that point I had made up my mind that all this, all this previous stuff hadn't worked before. And I made up my mind that like, I was, look, I'm going to give this guy three lessons. And if it doesn't work, I'm just going to put it, put the guitar down. I'm just going to give it up because it's not for me. And uh, the first lesson was absolutely terrible. I, I couldn't play a single note because I was so nervous. And mm. um, the second lesson, no kidding, no, no kidding. The second lesson, he was over 30 minutes late because he was taking his car to the mechanic shop or something like that. And then finally, the third lesson, this sounds really weird, but this is the truth. Um, he, I, I sat down. We were kind of in a dining room, living room type, type area. It was in his house. And he printed off some sh like a like a stack of papers uh to give to me before we started our lesson and he he walked he was going to he was about to walk out of the room to go make some coffee and as soon as i opened the paper i looked at some like scribbled dots and there's these really weird patterns that looked like somebody just scribbled them with their pencil and they copied them you know and i was like okay great here we go again like just more confusing concepts i'm just going to feel like an idiot and i it's so there's literally one moment where he I don't remember the exact words that he used, but he walked past my right shoulder to go to the kitchen to get some coffee. And I was looking at this chart and he said something about the number seven, but for whatever he said, I don't remember the exact words, but whatever he said, just like instantly somehow, like my brain was like a, like a, like a scanner or something. And my, my, it instantly connected some of the pieces that I'd learned before. And um, that's when I've, I've realized again, long story short, that's when I realized that, Every song we play, there's only seven different sounds. And it doesn't matter what the names of the notes are. You could name the notes X, Y, Z, or, or whatever, or pencil, or teddy bear. It doesn't matter. what. The, it's just a name. But 
in all Western music, like popular music, like, um, you know, jazz and uh, rock and classic rock and country and folk and R&B and all the, all the stuff that we listen to, you know, more or less, there's only seven different right notes. There's only seven different sounds. And each one of those sounds has its own feeling. And it's the same in every single song. And it's the same in every single key. Most people get confused when it comes to keys, but all a, a key, if we take, let's say a, a bucket, a, a key is just a container. A key just is a container that has notes in it. And we, I don't want to get too far into that because it's not important what the names are. My point right now is that um, if we take those same seven sounds and contain them, we can call the container a key. Let's just call it the key of X. The only difference, one second, the only difference between keys is that it's just like, stair steps all these seven sounds exist at a lower pitch and then you walk up the stairs or maybe I should go this way you walk up the stairs one step and then all those same seven sounds and same seven feelings are at a higher pitch and then you go up another step or another key to a different key and all the same seven sounds are at at a different a higher pitch but relative to each other all the same seven sounds they they sound and they feel the same in every single key in every single song and that's all there is here's kind of one of the big ahas is that most people try to play the guitar and that's the problem they're thinking about let me play this let me play this thing of wood and metal and let me put my fingers on these different frets and think about the dots and think about the names of the notes they're trying to play the guitar but what they don't realize is that their the goal is to play music on the guitar exactly. once you learn how music works once you learn how to play music you can go play any instrument in the store today you can go if you've never touched a piano before you can go start playing the white keys. In fact, anybody who's watching this, I dare you to try this. I, I would highly encourage you to try this. If you have access to a piano or a, or a keyboard or a keyboard on your cell phone or something like that, go to YouTube, put on a backing track in the key of C major. And once the music's playing, just hit the white keys. Don't touch the black keys, just hit the white keys. Just see where your ear wants to go with it. Just start improvising. You may not think you can do it, but I guarantee you, you will feel the notes and you will feel where you want to go next with it. You, you were born with it. Yeah, that's exactly it. And it's, it's so, it's so much more playing music is um, so much more than the theory and the modes and the scales and all that. It is what you, what you say as the feelings. It is those, those seven notes that express the feeling that we are wanting to express. Like when, when people say the guitar is singing, like, you know, Jimi Hendrix can make the guitar sing. It's because he knew which notes he wanted to express on the guitar. So can I make two two comments about that? Yeah. Okay, so one is about singing. I'll, I'll address that in a second. The first one is about language. So you and I are talking right now, right? Mm -hmm. Are you are you thinking about what you're saying? Not too much. <laughs> you're, you're just listening to what I'm saying, right? And then yeah. you're responding. Mm -hmm. Music is exactly the same thing. Uh, legendary jazz guitarist Pat Metheny said, music at its best is like a great conversation with an old friend. All you're doing is listening and responding with your own musical opinion. Now you have to get to the point where you can play your musical opinion, right? And that's what we teach in, in our courses. And that's what we that's where we get students uh, to go through those steps to be able to do that. But what I wanna point out about language, and then I'll get to the singing thing. Let's say about English, we're speaking English right now. We're not thinking about what we're talking about. We're just talking, we're just having a conversation. Music is a conversation, music is a language. And where most people get bogged down is exactly like this. All the people who go out there and they, and like myself, the only reason I can say this, because I did it, I know, I know what it feels like. All the people who go out there and they try to learn all this theory and all these concepts on paper and they try to read music, reading music is a good skill. Great. That's fine. But it's still something you need to analyze at first on paper. But let's just talk about stuff like circle of fifths and the cage system and all these different theories, right? It, that's the same thing as going like in an English textbook and opening up the English textbook and, and learning and studying grammar and studying like, oh, well, here's a past participle and here's a gerund and here's an infinitive and here's the subject of this prepositional phrase and, and whatnot. Would you ever expect to read that English textbook and then be able to go out and have a conversation? <laughs> it doesn't work that way, right? And that, that's what most people try to do. So anyway, like I said before, uh, that's why we get away from that. And that's why we that's why we teach people how to communicate. We teach people how to talk. We teach people how to sing, which leads me to the singing thing. So you mentioned that Jimi Hendrix knew how to make his guitar sing. Well, I disagree with that. So most people say that guitar is a musical instrument and I disagree completely. The guitar is not, a, it doesn't do anything. If you take your guitar 
off your shoulders and you lay it on the floor, what does it do? How long do you have to wait till music starts coming out of it? It's not a musical instrument. It's just a machine, right? The music comes from you. You are the musical instrument. So when you say Jimi Hendrix makes his guitar sing, well, he's not making his guitar sing. He is singing through his guitar. It's him singing. That's good. Yeah. So, anyway. yeah it's, uh, just a, one point on the, when you're talking about language, it's funny because um, I know some, some missionaries who who study language, they hardcore study for a couple months and then they're sent to different countries. And um, they they basically say the moment they hit ground, they have to throw everything they've learned because none of it is relevant. They have to start picking up and having conversations and conversations exactly. are a lot different than textbooks. Exactly. So those people who jump on YouTube or who have had teachers who, who can teach you scales and teach you how to play somebody else's song it's not the same as playing your own song or having no. that conversation uh, through your guitar. Not at all. And you would be amazed by how many music theory graduates I've taught. I've taught a girl who was on Broadway, uh, guys who've been playing for five, six decades, and who are who are all you know quote taught the the, the theory way, right? The the traditional way. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many music theory music theory graduates who have come to my studio and they can't play their way out of a paper bag. They can't even play one solo because they're thinking about all the stuff. But just like what you just said, you can't learn all the stuff from a book and then go to a new country and have a conversation. It just doesn't work that way. So I think that's a good segue into um, like exactly what you said. Like we've, we've had students come through breakthrough guitar, um, people who are, who are music majors, who like touring musicians who, are brand new musicians who uh, who want to become who want to play on stage one day, and um, they might have never gone into the the light bulb moment and learned about the seven feelings or guitar grid or or even gone. Some of the students who are in the super group right now that are listening to us that um, haven't gone into the guitar freedom formula. Like, what what would you say is the reason? I mean, you've kind of already said it, but um, if someone who's on the fence about like furthering their education like i've i've had I've, I've had teachers i've gone to school but i just still can't figure it out why is breakthrough guitar different in that in that regards yeah so instead of instead of talking about us or me necessarily uh, or why somebody should join something which you know of course we can talk about that later but it's really about the person and about the results that they want so in general you just mentioned this brock that and i mentioned it too that most people go out there and they try to learn all these they try to learn all this stuff. They learn this scale uh, pattern, or they learn how to read music, or they learn how to, to, do, to play the cage system or the circle of fifths or whatever. And they learn all these different pieces. And the, the underlying expectation, if, even if they don't realize it yet, because the music education industry has trained people to think this way, that by learning all of these things, by buying all these books, remember they're in the business of selling stuff, not not helping people get better, right? They have publishers have to keep selling books. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Um, but they they need something for people to learn. So they put out books called like, and this is ridiculous, but they, they put out books. I bought some too, so don't feel bad if you've ever bought this before. But the 1001 chords to memorize book or something like that, dude. No, I will I will pay somebody. I'll give somebody one a 100 bill if they can come to me and say, look, I bought this book and I learned all 1001 chords. And I play them every day when I pick up the guitar. I'll give somebody a hundred dollar bill. Not a single person has ever done that. And that's not the way real musicians learn. It's not the way real music is played. It's, it, like we said it before, it's a conversation. So anyway, my point is, if we if we back up for a minute and we think that, okay, if going out there and trying to learn all these individual concepts and like eventually, you know, eventually if I just learn enough, if I just practice enough, then it's all going to come together. First of all, that doesn't work. But if we if we zoom out and we think that, OK, if that's not the right path and if we realize if we look at guys like Eric Clapton, uh, Prince, David Bowie, Elton John, uh, Jimi Hendrix, like Stevie Ray Vaughan, there's so many guys, whether they were talented or not. There's so many guys who didn't learn music theory and who don't know how to read music. And there's you can go look it up. There's quotes. Uh, in fact, Jimmy, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, both of them. Why not go for both of them? So Jimi Hendrix said in his own biography, um, something like he finds that his inability to read music actually helps him focus on the sound more. And Steve Ray Vaughan said 
he finds that he does better. He said, because he doesn't know all the theory and stuff, he finds that he does better when he just listens to where he wants to go with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, whether they're talented or not, the point is those musicians prove that you don't have to study years, study years of theory and go through all the hard work and memorize endless scales and all that stuff to be able to play guitar and sound really darn good doing it to, to sound like a real musician. Right. So if we back up and we think about that, we think about, okay, what are those guys actually doing? And whether they realize it or not, like we talked about before, there's only seven sounds in every song. And all those seven sounds have the same feelings. And if you learn how to play the feelings, and if you learn, like there's there's literally one pattern, the freedom keys, the freedom key system is one pattern, right? You can break it down into three patterns, but it's just one. If you mm -hmm. take that one pattern, literally, listen to this, folks. If you take all the books, throw all the books out the window, throw all those theory concepts out the window. If you learn this one pattern, the freedom key system pattern, and you learn how to listen and hear to the seven feelings and play the feeling that you hear, you can literally play anywhere on the guitar neck all by feel without thinking about the notes. And you can play the music that you that you feel inside you. You can improvise. You can play solos. You can you can add your own creative touches to other people's songs that you love playing that you love. Anyway, the point is there's an easier way. There's an easier way not to learn all that stuff, but there's an easier way to pick up the guitar and start sounding good and playing freely today. You can do it today. I can get anybody in this room and show them how they can start expressing themselves and playing and actually sounding good and playing more freely than they ever have today. So anyway, now I'm kind of on a soapbox, sorry about that. But, but you know, look, I believe in this stuff. I use it every single time I pick up the guitar, every time. Uh, I never think about anything. When, in fact, when I pick up the guitar, and this is, look, this is not about me. Um, I just want to just, to just open your eyes to the, the fact that there's an easier way. Whenever I pick up the guitar, First of all, I'm never thinking about anything. And in fact, I go pick up the guitar sometimes to think about other stuff that I'm trying to figure out, like what do I need to buy on the grocery list? Or should I really buy this new car? And I'm just soloing the whole time. Like, you know, anyway. Um, so as far as breakthrough guitar goes, um, I wanna give one more example and then I'll hand it back over to you. I know I've been kind of hogging the conversation, but I really think this, it's valuable for people to hear this. I really, it really does open up a whole new world. So um, I want, let's, let's imagine that you wanted to drive from Orlando, Florida to Seattle, Washington. Now I looked this up the other day, according to Google, it takes about 45 hours. I think it was, it was either 45 or 54. I think it was 45. It takes about 45 hours to drive from Orlando, Florida to Seattle, Washington. Now, let's imagine airplanes have never been invented yet. If airplanes have never been invented and nobody's ever thought of an airplane and you wanted to drive from Orlando to Seattle and you went out and asked as many people as you could, what do you think most people would say about how to get to Orlando faster? Excuse me, how do we get to Seattle faster? Uh, drive a straight line. <laughs> yeah, drive a straight line, drive faster, take, yeah. take, better, take better roads, right? Yeah, you can do all that stuff. Will you get there faster? Yeah, of course you will. How much faster though? A couple hours maybe? Three hours maybe? Five hours if you're really speeding a lot? But the, mm -hmm. the problem is if you're speeding a lot, you, you're, you're, you're stressing your car. You're putting a lot of strain on your car. Your car could break. You're at risk of getting a ticket at every single second, right? The cops are going to be on, on your back. There's a lot of stuff to worry about. And you, the only benefit of doing that is getting to Seattle three hours, four hours maybe, faster, right? It's an incremental gain. This is my point. It's an incremental gain. And the way we're all taught to learn guitar is in a linear fashion, meaning through incremental gains, meaning that I'm going to start off learning a couple of chords. And then after I learn a couple of chords, I'm going to put those chords together to maybe form a piece of a song. And then maybe I'm going to learn a few little riffs or something that you music that other people have already learned. And then you think that let's go out there and, okay, let me buy those two books from Princeton that have 200 pages full of scales. I think I need to learn all that stuff. I think I need to learn, I need, I need to do all this hard work. I need to sit down and just study for hours and hours and hours. Steve, I play for 15 hours a day. I need to do the same thing if I want to play again. So I sit down and I study, for, I think I need to study for hours and hours and hours, put in so much time, put in so much effort. And I think that we're, we're brought up to believe that these guitar players are so talented. They're just so, they're geniuses, right? And they just get it. And everybody else doesn't get it. Even if they try for years or decades, 
Um, but that's just not true. Like, like after you become a good guitar player, you realize that's not true at all. That's not even remotely true. And you, you can relate to that, right, Brock? Oh, yeah. yeah, as a musician yourself. Yeah, exactly. So let's go back to the example about uh, driving from Orlando to Seattle. So if all the guitar, most guitar players out there, myself included, are out there trying to make linear progress, well, how long do you think it's going to take you to learn all that stuff, hundreds of years of material, to where you can finally put it all together yourself? And then maybe finally, like, just like a, a TV screen where when you increase your resolution, you have, you have to get more and more and more and more and more and more data points before it all starts to come together so you can actually see the big picture. That, that would take five lifetimes, right? And that's, again, that's what we call linear progress. So like that, there's a better way. What's the better way? Let's go back to our example. If you want to get from Orlando to Seattle, what would you do right now today, Brock? Uh, I put gas in the tank and hop in my car. No, you wouldn't. You would no. go to an airport and get in an airplane. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They invented airplanes. And here's my point. Here's my point. When previously it took you 45 hours to drive a car from Orlando to Seattle, then they invented airplanes. Airplanes are what we call a breakthrough. That means you can do something at a much higher level or with much greater results at a fraction of the time you could do before. Right. Instead of and I looked this up too. instead of driving 45 hours, you can now hop on a plane and get to Seattle in six hours, right? That's like 700 something percent, 700 percent, not seven, not 70, 700 percent faster. Now, just think if you were to, to apply that same breakthrough type thinking, that's why we call it breakthrough guitar. Just imagine if you were able to, if you were to take that same type of thinking and apply it to your guitar playing, whereas now you don't have to get in the car, drive state to state to state to state, stop at a hotel, go to sleep, gas up your car, get stuff to eat, go change your oil because you're driving 3,000 something miles, you know, thousands of miles. And then turn. finally, yeah, and find make wrong turns. Yeah, get lost, have to go through detours, have to hit potholes, have to replace your tires, all that stuff. Just imagine if you could just skip all that stuff and get on an airplane and be in Seattle in six hours. Same thing on guitar. When you follow the method of like, like we teach of the seven feelings and the, the freedom key system, you, you, I'm not making this up. I'm not exaggerating. You can literally pick up the guitar, play by feel without thinking about it in a matter of weeks, not four lifetimes. And that's what I consider a breakthrough. And that's why, uh, I mean, I hope you can tell that's why I'm so passionate about sharing this with people because it freaking works. I mean, like, I, I, I wasted 14, 15 years doing the, the hard way. Like, stop, stop doing that. I think that's a perfect time to jump in. And I just, I mean, uh, if you guys are in the super group or you guys are watching on YouTube, um, we have one student who, I mean, we have tons of students uh, who've had really great breakthroughs, but I just want to highlight one person, that's Glenn. Um, and he, he posted in the group uh, a few weeks back this quote, and I'm just going to read it to you. Uh, he says, I know this will sound really corny, but Jonathan talks about feeling and emotion in your playing. And as I was practicing the two major patterns, I came across the hook and it felt really good. So I played the rock ballad backing track and I was just trying to make things sound right. And as I hit this groove um, and was flooded with emotion, I literally had tears running down my face. I was kind of freaked out by it, but it was amazing. I truly am excited about this program. I've learned to uh, I've learned so much that it's hard to believe I wanted to play like this for 20 plus years. And guys, like that's literally why we do what we do. Um, I remember the first time I felt that emotion when I was playing with some friends and I was like, wow, playing playing music really works. And there's like so many times in my life that I've had that that same emotion and I can still feel it today. Like it's so it's really powerful, um, and that's exactly what we want for every one of you guys. Whether you're whether you're in the super group already, whether you're watching on YouTube or somewhere else, and you you feel like you have gone through that YouTube rabbit hole, or you've gone from teacher to teacher, or you've tried to learn a thousand and one chords, <laughs> like we we want we want you guys to have the breakthrough where you can say, oh, there I could either hop in my car and and drive. Um, from Seattle to, to Florida, and I've done that drive. It's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal. Um, or you can uh, hop on an, in an airplane with a pilot who will take you from, from point A to point B. 
Um, that's what we built Breakthrough Guitar for. So um, we have the light bulb moment, which teaches you the seven feelings. We have uh, the Guitar Grid 101, which teaches you how to uh, play the Guitar Grid. And then the Freedom Key Formula, which is one of the biggest breakthroughs that, I, that I've had personally as going through the course. Um, as a professional musician, I went through the course and the Freedom Key Formula opened it up for me. So whether, if, if you guys are on the fence on, on some of those, if you haven't jumped in, I definitely recommend checking out Breakthrough Guitar. Um, we'll, we'll add a link into the description. So if you guys want to join, if you want to learn more, we'll have some information for you guys. Um, but I just, honestly, I wanna thank you, Jonathan, for taking some time um, out of your busy schedule to share your heart and why you decided to do what you did with, with Breakthrough Guitar. and. Um, not just giving us another book uh you you put it in a you built it out in a way that was easy for us to understand and and if you guys honestly if you if you feel like you have breakthroughs i want to hear them so if you can put them in the comment section of this and below um we're going to check it throughout the week we love um hearing feedback from from you guys you guys are like our friends our family sure glenn glenn had an amazing breakthrough but we guys we get messages just like this every day every day people are saying this every day people are saying you know i played for 40 years uh there's another guy named glenn actually i think he was from new zealand and he said he said i've been playing for 40 years and never have i learned something so good so fast and like i said guys it, it's the truth people send us messages like this on a daily basis so like i said um I, I just want to you know before we fully sign off i just want to say thank you for being here thank you for investing the time in yourself to be here and i just want to encourage you and say that look you can do it you can like you, just let us show you the steps you can do it that's all i gotta say <laughs>